Joining me now, House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff. He is also, of course, a member of the Select Committee investigating the Capitol insurrection. Good to have you with us this morning. When it comes to this New York Times report, the pushback that we're seeing from the White House, is this simply about semantics when it comes to this intel and how it's being used? I think what it's about is an effort uh, by the administration not to do or say things that will escalate uh, the conflict. Uh, we are providing uh, real-time intelligence uh, to Ukraine to help it defend itself. Uh, I don't think the administration wants to go into specifics uh, about just what kind or what circumstances. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, Ukraine is successful. Uh, they've been invaded uh, by their neighbor. They're the victim of uh, war crimes by Russian forces. Uh, and there's a lot on the line uh, for Ukrainians, most of all, but also for freedom-loving people around the world. Uh, so we want to do everything we can short of getting into a shooting war ourselves with Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so I think there are um, efforts by the administration to do exactly that uh, and, and observe exactly that line. As we heard from General Milley, the, the pipes are open at this point. Would this in any way change the intelligence that is being given to Ukraine? Well, the nature of the fight in Ukraine is changing. Uh, Russian forces previously were widely dispersed. Uh, they could be picked off by Ukrainians and um, uh, ambushed, as many of them were. Now the Russians are concentrating their forces in the east. A lot of the fighting is at long range, using long range artillery. So that is changing the nature of what we provide in terms of weapons. We're giving them long range uh, weapons like howitzers. Uh, and we want to make sure that we provide them with the intelligence uh, they need both to defend themselves against Russian artillery attacks, but also uh, to make their own attacks on Russian forces more successful. Mm -hmm. So as the war changes, uh, the nature of our support changes. Uh, but uh, through it all, we want to uh, do everything possible to help uh, Ukraine succeed. In terms of those needs, you, of course, met with President Zelensky in Kyiv and said that he brought up needs you had not heard before. What are those needs? Well, I can't go into a lot of specifics, but some of them uh, do uh, relate to the changing nature of that war, that uh, war at a distance. Uh, some it, it didn't surprise us that he was interested in, uh, but nonetheless, uh, as the nature of the conflict has changed, as the nature of the humanitarian disaster has mm -hmm. changed, uh, the needs continue to evolve. Uh, and a big part of our purpose in being there was to hear from him directly what we can do to best assist. Uh, so there were new, uh, I think, items that came out of the discussion, but not ones that I can discuss with you today. So you can't discuss the specifics, but are those needs that you feel the U.S. can meet? Yes, uh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, and this is certainly part of Ukraine's public list uh, of asks. But given that uh, this fight has moved to uh, a long distance kind of a fight, I think uh, multiple rocket launch systems would be very important. Uh, you know, I think in the early days of the war, there was a concern that we couldn't provide Ukrainians with anything that would take time to train them on. But as the war has, has dragged on, uh, it means that we have more time to train Ukrainians on more sophisticated systems, and I think we should provide them. Uh, similarly, reopening the port of Odessa is important to Ukrainians. But it's important to people uh, starving all over the world because Ukraine is such a important uh, breadbasket for the world. Uh, so helping them uh, with the munitions they need to uh, sink the Black Sea fleet, which they've shown very capable of doing, but can be more capable of doing if we provide them with the right tools. Um, I do want to move on because there are a couple of other topics we need to hit here. You, of course, serve on the House Committee, which is investigating January 6th. Donald Trump Jr. met with you all yesterday. I know you're not going to give me specifics on what was discussed. We've, all, we've both been doing this long enough to know that. But according to our own CNN reporting, he was you know, there for a little over three hours, answered all questions, did not take the fifth, was cordial. He's now the third family member, right, to meet with the committee. How would you describe his level of cooperation and even his willingness to speak with the committee? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm afraid uh, I can't do that. We don't really confirm uh, who appears before the committee uh, we are getting a great number of witnesses, uh, many of whom surprised me with their willingness to come in. Um, so I think the, the body of information we are accumulating continues to grow and grow, but we're really not commenting or confirming. Uh, it's really up to witnesses whether they want to discuss uh, any uh, testimonial cooperation with the committee. 
Um, as, as we look at where things stand, there is now more audio of Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. Of course, this comes from January 8th, talking to some top aides. I just want to play that quickly. What the president did is atrocious and totally wrong. I do think the impeachment divides the nation further and continues to fight even greater. Um, that's why I want to reach out to Biden. I wanted the president to meet with Biden. But that's not going to happen. I want to see about I was meeting with Biden, sitting down, make a smooth transition to show that and continue to keep those statements going. Um, so hopefully, I know he's got to talk to Pelosi, but he's going to, uh, hopefully he calls me today. We've heard consistent comments um, from behind closed doors from Kevin McCarthy. The reality is that today in 2022, he supports Donald Trump. Uh, Trump has said this is basically water under the bridge. All is good. So what does this audio coming out now change? Does this have any impact on the January 6th committee's investigation? Uh, it certainly has an impact on our investigation. It helps to flesh out uh, what Kevin McCarthy was doing and what he was saying, because he has lied so often since then about what he was doing in those days and hours. Um, and, you know, tragically, I think it underscores uh, for the whole country that if you're, if you're willing to tell the truth, there's no place in Republican leadership for you. Uh, Kevin McCarthy retains his position because he's willing to lie for Donald Trump and deny all those conversations uh, that you just uh, played, uh, some of which you just played. Um, but others who are committed to telling the truth, like Liz Cheney, they're forced out of Republican leadership. Uh, to me, that's the real scandal, not, not McCarthy's lies or his lies about his lies, but rather that there's no place for the truth at the top of Republican leadership. Real quickly before I let you go, um, the White House, the president has said the White House would prepare some options if Roe is ultimately overturned. Our Caitlin Collins asked Jen Psaki specifically about that yesterday. She didn't have specifics, but the possibility of this being overturned shouldn't come as a surprise at this point, especially with the ruling in this Mississippi case being imminent. Is the White House prepared for this moment? I don't know whether any of us uh, were really prepared for this. It's certainly been a, a specter uh, haunting the country for decades. Uh, but like so many things uh, during this era, uh, we are shocked on the one hand and not surprised on the other. Uh, we are going to have to take up and try to pass uh, legislation in Congress to make Roe the law of the land. I have to hope that maybe some of those senators uh, who accepted at face value, though they shouldn't, uh, the false representations of these judicial nominees, uh, that they would uphold precedent, that they respected precedent, particularly in this area, uh, when that was proven uh, to be so uh, demonstrably false uh, with this draft opinion, that they will support uh, a statute to protect Roe and they will not allow the filibuster to stand in the way. Um, but uh, time will tell. Uh, and I think that we should go beyond, frankly, in my view, and, and expand the size of the court, uh, given uh, the way McConnell has gained the system to add two socially conservative justices who are willing to threaten reproductive health in this country. Congressman Adam Schiff, uh, we are out of time. We'll have to leave it there. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank you.